Hi, and welcome back to Katie's Corner in Space in Volume 3 of the Star Trek Void after a week off for a much-needed bit of family time. But now it's time to see what we missed and if anything interesting has happened in the last two weeks. And as I just got out all of my Christmas decorations, I thought I'd have a look at what was available to add to my collection and found Hallmark once again on point when it comes to selection, though I'm occasionally shocked by a price or two. Like most on-brand trademark items, the cost of a Trek ornament might set you back a bit more than your average Christmas bulb, but the variety isn't bad. I'm partial to Janeway and was pleasantly surprised by McCoy. And of course, you can always explore good old Amazon to check out a bigger selection of stores, but I always like trying out a few sites and really like the selection at the Star Trek shops as well, so if you're in the market, it's a fun place to start looking. Now when it comes to wrapping, I'm going in a different direction than wrapping presents, but before I continue, don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons for more Trek updates, and please share if you hear something you think others would get a kick out of. Now back to those updates. It's a wrap on Discovery Season 5, and many of our stars celebrated by sharing the news through social media. A wrap party was held, and I do hope now a little relaxation is possible for the cast and on-set crew as episodes are created from all their hard work. It will still be some time before we see those episodes, most likely sometime in July of 2023, but as the cycle of Trek continues, we will have pretty consistent Trek entertainment through then. While Prodigy is running its second half of its premiere season, Picard is gearing up for its final installment in February, and I've really enjoyed the speculation that comes with expectation of a fantastic story. From who Worf will be when we meet him again, to exactly who Geordi married, I'm quite curious who finally got past his lack of smoothness when it comes to wooing the opposite sex and got to know him well enough to marry him. Also, there's a mild dispute in my house as to who he married. And when it comes to the TNG series finale and our doctor, I love the idea of Captain Crusher on her medical ship assisting people all over the quadrant. It was a bit surprising to me when it aired originally, but I loved it. So I'm impatient to see where she really ended up. I mean, the prediction 30 years ago so far, not accurate at all. Except for maybe Geordi and Picard for about five minutes of the first episode. But season three of Picard is promising to really reach out to all fans of 24th century Star Trek. It's important to showrunner Terry Metalis not to just serve TNG fans, but to honor Voyager and Deep Space Nine as well. I think it's important to Deep Space Nine fans to feel seen. It's a continuation of Voyager 2, of course, with Seven of Nine, Jerry Ryan in the show, if you're going to be in this time period, there's such a rich opportunity to honor what came before. We may visit Voyager or the space station. In fact, DS9 seems almost inevitable considering there will be a connection between the plot for season three and the fallout of the Dominion War. That and Terry Metalla's hint, we will be seeing more than just Warp and Seven from the respective franchises. I do love the crossovers. Once again, we have reached that time. If you want to be surprised in any upcoming Trek shows and yet to air episodes and you've got warp, engage out of here now because it's spoiler time. So shields up, exit through your nearest wormhole or beam out as quickly as you can. As interviews are done to promote the new season of Picard, more and more tidbits are being revealed before the first scene even shows up on screen. And one thing in particular is exactly who we will be seeing in that first scene. That someone will be none other than Beverly Crusher. I loved the very first scene, McFadden said. I mean, to me, that was so much fun to get to do that, to be active and fighting. I loved it, which I love. According to the trailer, we know the reason Picard is called back to service is because Beverly is in trouble, so the decision to get things going from the first scene bodes well, in my opinion. The season should be full, fast-paced if from the start the story gets going. No easing into the story, just BAM! Beverly is getting in trouble. And for such an adventurous season full of Trek mythos and a feel attributed to the next generation in particular, Getting just the right sound was just one piece of the puzzle in creating the third season, but an important part. If we were going to say this is the last Star Trek The Next Generation film, or 10 of the last Star Trek The Next Generation movies, because all the episodes are very different, then it needed to sound like that too, Metallus said. And that required Stephen Barton. Then later in the season, the score gets so massive as the story grows that we had to bring in some help from Frederick Weidman 
who is a brilliant composer as well. I grew up with legends like Jerry Goldsmith and James Horner, not to mention Dennis McCarthy and Cliff Eidelman. All those Trek composers have nods. So we will not only have the people on screen from the next generation, but also the sounds, and from what I read, also the look, as the title font is said to reflect TNG as well. And with the show appearing on Paramount+, Plus, we will assuredly be treated to an opening sequence, which brings the nostalgia to a crescendo. We have less than three months to wait, so until then, check out my ever-growing collection for the Star Trek Void playlist, and I'll see you there.